Ah, Colin, can you help me out, please? As you've seen previously, MTD Network has been on a road show. It was Colin and myself. However, today we've got a third person joining us. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Colin. Um, I've literally been kidnapped this morning. It's been an uncomfortable, bumpy ride in your boot, Colin. Haven't seen any road signs, so where are we? Joe, I'm sorry about that, but we're actually, we can see high tech aerospace. We're in Coventry. But what we've done is we've handpicked a number of MTD Network engineers. So we've got engineers all around the UK, but these guys we're seeing are all based around the Midlands. You know, so often we hear about the industries that the companies can serve, but it's those specialist components that I want to find out about. I'm really excited about this. Let's go in and have a look, closer look. Let's go. Come on. Let's get the door, Lindsay. Oh, it's chilly. Cheers, Colin. Colin, talk to me about this machine. Lindsay, this is EDM fast hole drilling. So, first of all, you've got the electrode. Mm -hmm. um, these will go from about 0.5 mil up to 5 mil in diameter or width. But also you can see the actual length here of the drill. So a lot longer. So this one here, I think is about 200 mil. So you get a real deep hole. So a great example is this component here. So it starts off the component in my hand there. But what they've done is they've drilled these holes here. So really, really tiny holes there. But also the depth on this, I think, is about 40, 50 mil. So you wouldn't get that with a normal milling machine because it's far too intricate and too small. And also the speed. So with this material, I think it is steel, but it'll do your tungstens, your ink canals, really tough materials and really, really quickly compared to what it could do on a milling machine. And high tech as well, they're making their fixtures and work holding and particularly with this piece, they're timing it up with the splines as well. So it's keeping the hole in the right position. So all that precision we've been talking about. Lindsay, obviously you know your stuff, but I'm gonna have a chat with Gio. Gio, EDM sync, you've got a great component here. What's actually occurring? This is a very complex component, as you can see, Colin. Now, they're spark eroding this slot on a two-way compound angle. Right, I'd like to, well, why wouldn't you mill it? Well, you could mill it, but it would take forever to do so. Um, you'd have to have very thin end mills that could break. Um, so they're doing this effortlessly on this spark, eroding, uh, spark erosion machine. So, uh, and not only uh, are they doing it effortlessly, they're designing and manufacturing the fixtures to hold it at a two-way compound angle, which is quite impressive too. Yeah, really impressive. And also there, you've got a radius down the bottom, which you can't, if you turn it around just so you show the camera. So really impressive piece of work there with that electrode, but this has four ops, so the other three ops, similar sort of things, really intricate, really tiny. Yeah, it'd take a long time to try and do this on a milling machine. It'd be nearly impossible, to be honest. You wouldn't, you know. Yeah, Geo, great example. I'm going to go and have a chat. Well, I'm going to find Lindsay, who's, who's wandered around to the uh, wire erosion section. Colin, let's find out about this machine. Lindsay, yep, electrical discharge machining. So we've seen your fast hole drilling and your sink. This is your wire erosion. But I'm going to put you to the test. OK, that's fine. Right, I've got a part here. Now, normally you'd be thinking about making this part probably on a lathe. However, High tech have created this rectangular pocket. Now on a lathe, even if you've got driven tooling, you're going to have a radius of the tool. So it's going to have the rounder edges. It's not. You've got a rectangular pocket here. How have they done it? Essentially, run the wire through it to get those really, really sharp edges. That's a great example of why you'd use wire erosion. But at high tech, we've seen what you can't do on a mill or a lathe. But let's kind of look at what they can do on a mill and a lathe. Fancy seeing you here, Gio. Now, milling, turning. Now, unfortunately, some of the components, a lot of the components, NDAs, aerospace, F1, but what you got there? Um, Colin, this is a, a component made from graphite, uh, made on this Haas machine. Right, um, so graphite though, quite difficult to machine the actual uh, material? No, the material is not difficult to machine. It's, it, it's, it's rel relatively easy to machine. It's, it's the complexity of the component, really, on, on, on this particular one quite thin stemmed components here with special features at, at the end. Um, but the key to this process is really here, Colin, is that they've retrofitted this machine and they've enclosed it and they've ad added um, an extraction unit. So when cutting the graphite, it's quite um, a dangerous substance, I suppose. So all, they're clearing the air in the machine and they're extracting. So health and safety rearing its head again. But in terms of the components, so high tech here have showcased what they could do in terms of EDM 
but milling and turning so they can take the component right from the beginning so yeah basically what we're seeing here is that they're, they're turning components they're milling components traditional turning and milling features that you'd expect but when they come across a very special feature like we've looked at uh, previously in the EDM section, very deep holes, very small diameters or two-way compound slots or you know, very complex features, they can also take that work on too. So they can do everything in-house and keep full control of, of, of the processes and components. Gio, it's a great, great showcase of what high tech can do, but what we're going to do is go and see our next engineer. The guys are already inside and we are here at Maylan Engineering. Now, I've already spoken to Steve, who's the MD, and they specialize in everything. So if there's an industry you can think of, they are making parts for it. Follow me. So what have we got here then, Geo? Hi, Lins. Well, here we've got two complex turn components um, that they are doing in a very productive way. So they're doing them both in one operation. So they're turning, slotting, grooving, They've got live tooling on the lathe, which is enabling them to do that. But ultimately, it's making the components uh, cost effective. Um, and we look at this other component here, Lindsay. Um, and as you can see, they're doing this in one operation. They're turning, they're threading, they're grooving. They're circular pocketing here and grooving again here, all in one operation again, which is making, you know, investing in that new technology and, and the latest technology is making them uh, competitive. Yeah, and also cost effective long term. We always say less waste and we always say keep those spindles turning, don't less we? Less operations, um, so they're saving on operations, on setup times. Yeah. Okay, let's head over to Colin and I'll see you in a moment. Oh, wow, Colin, that's huge. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. <laughs> so talk to me about either this machine or, or what you're doing. I'm just checking out. Steve, Steve made a little investment in a nice little Puma lathe. <laughs> two metres. Well, he's just checking, actually. He thinks 12 inches on chuck diameter. So great, great part. OK, yeah. Um, and isn't this more your size component, Colin? <laughs> go and see, Gio. OK, go on. Let's go. Right then, Gio, you look like you're working in the machine shop right now. Yeah, just looking at some more uh, components, Lindsay. And it, it just these components here just show the kind of components um, and, and the kind of processes that they're capable of manufacturing here at Mayland. So we've got something that potentially a valve body that would maybe uh, get made out of a casting, but they're making out of solid, solid uh, piece of aluminium and lots of different features. With this component here, it's a bit of turning and a bit of milling, but they're using a four-axis unit to put in the, the holes around the, the diameter of the component. So some really nice milled parts as well as turn parts. Nothing really is beyond them. Um, they're happy to take on any type of component. Give them a go. Perfect. That's what we said earlier as well. Now, I've got a little challenge for the MD, Steve, of the company. So Steve, lovely to see you again. Now, um, we've already done a video before on the Pallet Master, but we kind of skipped over the accessibility. And can you tell everybody why the Pallet Master is so good? Um, well, your components are outside the machine while you're loading them and unloading them. So rather than being bent in, doubled over, bad back, you're actually outside the machine. The components are readily available. And you can just change them over, no problem. And the machine's running. And also, health and safety-wise, this is a big deal nowadays. Now, Steve, I've heard you are a 15-second man, so um, you're going to have to prove to us and everyone who's watching why you have earned that status. OK, I'll try and do a pallet changing that time, but, yes, thanks a lot. <laughs> it's a pleasure. OK. Right then, well done, I'm proud. Uh, Lindsay, that was actually a record, that was 7.99 seconds. Okay. Wow, quicker than last time, well done, Steve. Thank you. Right, we're off to the next engineer, Newport CNC. But, Lindsay, where's Gio? Oh, he's still in the boot of the car. Oh well. Let's go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
So we're here today at Carbon Art in Brackley. Now here they make incredible, very high-end artwork using Formula One components. And we're here on behalf of Newport CNC, but I am stealing the show with this because the guys are over here shopping. They want to buy some of the artwork themselves for home. So um, you guys just enjoy yourselves and we're gonna head over to Steve Knowles from Newport C&C because Steve, you're part of the whole setup here, aren't you? In terms of providing parts for these incredible pieces of artwork. Now over here we've got, it's a hammerhead shark, hammerhead isn't shark, it? Yeah, made out of um, carbon fiber layered up. So um, it's actually all parts of the Formula One cars as well, or inspiration. It's, it's, it's materials that um, Formula One cars are made out of really. Uh, and that's how we got involved making the, uh, the fins really, out of aluminium. Okay, talk to me about how you make this and what's unique about this. Um, well, it's, um, it's, you have to be, uh, it's got quite a nice finish on it. Uh, he, before, he used to make them by layering up other materials. It took quite a long while to do it. So he wanted to make it out of a solid lump of aluminium mm -hmm. um, in one operation. So, well, it was two operations, actually. Um, we do the first operation there. We surface finish over here, do like a 3D uh, finish on that. And then it's laid up on the second operation and same on the other side really. And that surface finish, that's not the actual finish that will happen on a final piece of artwork, is it? No, this, is, this one doesn't have to be that brilliant because it's rubbed down, um, we use, use the DA just to get the key for the paint really, so it's, it's painted finish, so it doesn't need to be um, perfect. But you can provide that, and what about this piece, because you've got a little bit of a curvature on this, haven't you? Yeah, as you can see the curvature on that, um, this is done on a five axis first operation, we do the surface finish on the top, and turn it on its side to do the hole in the side. And then it's got a three axis op doing, doing the second side. Right, and you can see that really que clearly. Newport CNC, I know we've mentioned you and met you before, but it's all milling, isn't it? And yeah. you've got a range of up to five axis machining yeah, capabilities as well. Yeah, we've got uh, yeah, three two three axis machines, one with a fourth axis unit on it, and then we've got another three axis machine that's also got a f uh, five axis trunnion on it. Surface finish here because you're not just creating the parts here are you you're creating the mold tooling as well yeah this this finish obviously needs to be a lot better because it's producing the finished part so this um this is the finished part there so any areas you get in here will show up on there so he needs, he needs a really, very good uh, surface finish on that this is made out of aluminium and then we've got another one over here which we've made this is out of model board which is a similar sort of thing really mm -hmm. it's just it needs to be a good good finish um so that is but it's just out of a different uh, material it's just a different, slightly different material, a different process, really. Right, OK, because we're talking about yeah. Formula One and you think about the aerodynamics and, of course, the fish that you're seeing here and some of the parts are Formula One parts, are ex-Formula One parts, but they use fish because of the hydrodynamics of fish as well. Yeah. So thank you so much, Steve. Okay, no and what I'm going to do is, you know, let you guys enjoy the artwork that Carbon Art here from Alistair Gibson has to offer. <laughs> 